In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the recent Amazon Prime release of On a Wing and a Prayer, one of Amazon's first faith-based films. This is going to be an interesting watch as it centers around a man who has to take control of an airplane although having little piloting experience and safely land it to save the passengers on board. But the question is, is this a soaring delight or is it a raging airplane wreck? Well, let's find out together with this review. This film was not exactly what I was expecting. Now when you're watching a movie, expectation is everything. It determines whether you leave the movie feeling like you've just seen a masterpiece versus a cinematic disaster. And this film was neither. From a mediocre faith message to uninteresting character backstories and even numerous characters who didn't even deserve to be in the film at all. You shouldn't be here. This film isn't awful and you might even enjoy it, but I highly doubt you're gonna be logging out of Amazon Prime saying, this is one of the best Christian movies I've ever seen. You probably never would say it like that anyway. Rather, this film just feels like Amazon wanted a project to attract a wider Christian audience since they've attracted pretty much everyone else at this point anyway. So they said, well, let's just make a movie about some man who has to fly a plane with no flying experience or something like that. And since this is based on a true story, I do want to acknowledge that I'm not saying that the White Family's true story of survival was uninteresting, but rather that the film adaptation was lacking in several different areas. But anyway, let's go to the start of the film. If you judge this film off of the first 30 minutes, you would actually be understandable and thinking that so far this is a fairly good film. The setup is well handled. Now the job of the first 30 minutes of any film is really to establish the main characters, their basic desires, and the weaknesses or obstacles preventing them from obtaining those desires. So the film starts by establishing several things. Number one, Doug White sucks at flying. Take up pottery because you really suck at flying. Number two, Doug and his brother Jeff are expert barbecuers. Okay, now what does that have to do with the rest of the film? Pretty much nothing, but it does make Doug and Jeff likable characters and gives us growling stomachs in the process. Number three, Doug has a mostly happy life and wonderful family. Thank you, it would be nice. On behalf of me and my older sister, the family zombie, thank you. I'm standing right here, I could hear that. I mean, his oldest daughter is bad attitude, but that's about it. Maybe you need a better perspective and you want to spend the night out there. <laughs> what, outside in the park? Wait, what, you're gonna leave your daughter outside because you don't like her attitude? So everything in Doug's life seems to be going just great until suddenly, out of the blue, his very close brother dies of a heart attack. This introduces the personal struggle or character weakness of the film. Doug begins to become angry with God for allowing his brother and previously father both to die of heart attacks. Again, so far, so good. The movie has so far introduced our main characters, made them likable, and introduced the personal struggle that the character is going through. So far, so good. So far, so good. The rest of the film's job is to use any external conflict Doug White faces to resolve the inner struggles he's going through and ultimately make him a better man. So basically, once Doug and his family gets on the aircraft to travel back from his brother's funeral, that's where the rest of the film starts. Now, this is one of the first things in the film that went differently than I expected. When I read the bio of the film, a man has to save an aircraft from crashing with little piloting experience, I was expecting a commercial aircraft with dozens of people on it. Almost a left behind kind of vibe where there's like this general chaos and it would increase the severity of the moment because now Doug White is responsible for the lives of dozens of people. He would also potentially have a larger emotional payoff at the end because instead of just saving his family, he'd be saving numerous people, each with their own personal story stories and reasons for why they need to keep on living. But instead, the film just had him, his wife, and his two daughters on the plane. It just wasn't what I was expecting. I was not expecting that. But I, I was also surprised how quickly the pilot died inside of this film. I literally 
barely counted it down. And it was only a few seconds, over 60 seconds from the takeoff when Doug turns over and the pilot's dead. Now, I'm sure they did that for the pacing of the film, but it felt honestly really rushed and almost like the pilot character was being swept under the rug without fully establishing him as a character before he died. In other words, he kind of just pops on screen for a few minutes and is killed off before we're able to really build any emotional connection with him. So of course, when he dies, we don't really care. Honestly, I think it would have been really clever if they had given him some emotional dialogue between him and Doug where he tried to comfort him and encourage him in his faith because then that would increase the emotional conflict with Doug. In other words, once he died, Doug would be thinking, well, God, he was just telling me there was a reason for my brother's death and now he's dead too. Now am I supposed to believe in you? It increases the severity of the situation. Another thing that I think they really struggled with in this film was the over-dramatization of just about everything after the plane takes off. It's like they were trying so hard to be this epic, super awesome airplane movie. Ha, 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 ha. Now, this is epic. They couldn't even take moments to pull back periodically and let the viewers breathe. One of the most powerful things a story can do is take the viewer on this journey of emotional highs and lows where one second you're happy, laughing, and joyful and hopeful, and then the next second you're anxious and afraid. And it's like this roller coaster of emotions that you bring the viewer along with. Instead, in this film, they pretty much had a constant, nonstop pace of exciting moment after exciting moment that actually hurt the film more than it helped. For example, when the pilot first died, instead of taking a moment of sadness and for them to kind of honor his life, the film instead tried to turn it into an exciting moment where the pilot's body tipped forward, hit some controls, and turned the plane into a nosedive. <laughs> We already don't really care about his death because we didn't know him as a character, but now it's turning his death into an exciting moment so you even further don't feel the sadness of the moment. As the story progresses, it introduces numerous control tower specialists and former pilots who assist Doug in the process of trying to safely land his plane. Along with these characters, it makes sense that you would give each of them backstories so they don't come across as just one-dimensional characters. So really briefly, let's take a look at some of these characters and see what their backstories are and how they stack up on making them interesting, likable characters. First of all, we have Dan, who is apparently a womanizer who gets drunk at bars and tries to pick up country singing chicks. He then proceeds to act like a jerk at work when he's going through a hangover. Yes! That's how it's done. Still on my break. Yeah, it should be about over. Ralph, I've got a headache. Is there a problem? Yeah, so likable guy for the first character. Next up we have Carrie, an unemotional former pilot who acts like a jerk to his girlfriend. He's just trying to help. Yeah, well, next time don't. Here's what I don't need. Some psycho babble nonsense when you have no idea what you're talking about. His girlfriend, who's on the verge of breaking up with him because he's emotionally unavailable. And how do we know he's emotionally unavailable? Well, because his girlfriend says so in one of the most creative lines of dialogue I've ever heard. Emotionally, Carrie. You're never gonna let me in emotionally. Next up is Donna, who is a young flight fanatic who wants to become a pilot one day. And her reason? Because her teacher told her that she could. <laughs> I'm gonna be a pilot one day. Okay, why? Because one time after science class, Mr. Jones told me I couldn't. The first thing I want to say is Donna could be absolutely wiped from the storyline. And honestly, the film would probably be better for it. She doesn't really contribute anything to the actual story. She doesn't meet any of the control tower specialists. She never actually meets or helps Doug in any special kind of way. Her only purpose in the story is literally just to be on screen and explain flight terminology to viewers. If he goes too slow, wind will stop flowing over the wing and the plane can drop out of the sky. It's probably what happened to Amelia. I'm not saying we're geniuses, but I feel like a lot of the terminologies we would understand even if there wasn't somebody explaining it necessarily. So the story just kind of struggles because the rest of the characters are in different ways, just kind of unlikable people. They serve their purpose in helping Doug and ultimately giving directions that are going to save his life. But in their personal life and their backstories, they're written in such a way that instead of their backstories helping them, 
it rather hurts some of his characters and makes them even less likable. Another of the areas that I think the film really struggled with is how it handled Doug's internal conflict and his faith after the death of his brother once the plane took off. It is to be expected, but the second half of the film largely transitioned from internal conflict to the external conflict of trying to safely land the plane and save his family. What an expert film will do is marry the internal conflict to the external conflict. So as the character progresses through the story, through the physical real world struggles, he's forced to come to terms with his personal weakness and experience a heart transformation. But instead, this film puts his struggling relationship with God on the back burner until just about the very end of the film. I understand the majority of the struggle has to be external at this point, but I also want to continue to see the internal conflict that the first 30 minutes established. But now, that is pretty much transitioned to almost 100% external conflict. I feel the good in you. The conflict. There is no Anyway, the story finally comes to a close, and I will say this, despite all the things that I've complained about to this point, the emotional payoff at the end of this film is very good. It genuinely like made my eyes start watering. I was just so happy to see Doug finally safe on the ground with his family after all that he'd gone through. And also, Dennis Quad in this film just did an expert job of portraying the emotional highs and lows and all that he went through in this film. Like, he watches and you feel compassionate because his facial expressions were so good. He played the character so well and all that he went through. The ending was just expert. Like, they had this part where they started playing Hallelujah. It was like, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's how you put music in your videos and don't get copyright strikes. I also want to say, Dennis Quad in this film is pretty stinking nimble. Like, I'm blown away how well in shape he is for being 69 years old. Anyway, the story wraps up each of the characters with an almost cheesy, pretty much picture-perfect ending for each one of them. Dan ends up basically magically having a change of heart. Unexplainably, he stops drinking and now has a more sincere interest in this country singing female rather than just wanting to hook up with her. Actually, I just came to, uh... Close out my dad. Hey, how about we go someplace and get coffee? And then what? Can you use some help picking out a new phone. And then Carrie opens up emotionally with his girlfriend and experiences a healed relationship with her. I love you, Ashley. You finally said it. So all in all, this is a watchable film, but it just seems to lack a general complexity in the depth of theme that would otherwise allow it to hook a more mature audience. But despite all that, I think the majority of you guys will enjoy this film. I think you'll find it moderately enjoyable and definitely inspiring. Also, keep in mind, there is some minor profanity and some usage of God's name in vain in this film. No more saying cuss words, guys. If you say a cuss word, then you're like going to jail. There's also a curious side story where he's living with his girlfriend and also some light sexual dialogue between Dan and the country singer and also between Doug and his wife. With all that in mind, I would say my final rating for the film would be a four out of 10 for just the general storytelling. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Have you seen the film yet? Are you planning to watch it? Whatever it is you want to say, drop it in the comments below. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. As a Christ follower, I've made the resolution to take every opportunity possible to share my faith with the world. If you've never given your life to Christ, I'd love to share with you how Christ has transformed the man that I've become. I've attached my email onto this video where you can shoot me a quick email and I'd love to have that conversation. Or if you're a Christian struggling with your faith or just looking for ways to grow closer to God, I'd love to have that conversation with you. With that, you guys have an awesome day. God bless.